Hello, my friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Miss May, my channel. I do a variety of lifestyle videos and the food review videos. If this content interests you, make sure you subscribe. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I want to share some of my tips and symptoms from trying to conceive after a miscarriage. I had a miscarriage right before I conceived this baby. Um, at the time of filming, I was in my second trimester, about 26 weeks, and I just wanted to share like how I conceived. Uh, how Healthy child after my first miscarriage and I hope these tips can help you as well so some of you guys in my previous video requested this video so I want to make this video so hopefully it will help you out and also another reason is that like after my first miscarriage like a lot of other people's videos like this really helped me out both emotionally and also with like tips and tricks in terms of how to get conceived for the next child so there it is. so first I want to share my TTC tips trying to conceive tips uh, trying to conceive can be different from person to person depending on your state of health and your state of emotions so generally speaking what helps me to um, trying to conceive is to first change my lifestyle is first of all make sure you have a way to deal with your stress because when you're stressed um, it affects your hormone productions it may make it really hard for you to produce enough hormone to get pregnant or to sustain your pregnancy so the first thing is um, if you have a stressful life or job make sure you find a way to relieve the stress um, yoga definitely helps me a lot meditation helps me a lot and having enough sleep definitely helped a lot so, so when it comes to stress not just in the emotional stress but also the stress on the physical body so before my first pregnancy i was exercising a lot a lot a lot so exercises are great for your health and I actually it's one of the tips trying to conceive but it's also a stressor for the body so after my miscarriage I actually intentionally reduced the number of hours and the intensity of my workout intense exercise dieting are all stressors to our body that may affect our hormone reproductions I used to work out two to three hours a day six hours per week which is very intense and I do very intense boxing workout kettlebell workout battle ropes workout uh, in mixture with yoga as well um, but <clears throat> ever since I know I am trying to conceive like ever since like I had a miscarriage I generally reduce my workout to one hour per day six hours per week which is still a lot but I was able to gain a little bit of the weight um, because I try not to exert myself because I want to save the nutrients for the baby as well and I want to make sure that like I have enough body fat percentage eat enough body fat to sustain or produce the hormones and sustain the pregnancy as well I was still pretty active but not as like crazily active and exert myself so that's the first factor is stress emotional stress physical stress and dieting definitely cause stress if you're trying to lose weight that like dieting restriction color restriction definitely affects you it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be eating healthy but it just consider like when you're on a restrictive diet it may be a stressor in your body as well the second tip of trying to conceive I, I never drink alcohol because I'm allergic to alcohol I never smoke one thing that I used to do before my first miscarriage was that I used to drink a lot of coffee I used to drink between three to four cups of coffee a day uh, on the work days and maybe two to three on the weekend um, coffee is not bad for you but overconsumption of coffee can be bad for you so overconsumption of coffee is linked to increased risk of uh, miscarriage in the first trimester so even so after my first miscarriage I intentionally reduced the number of cups of coffee that I drink a day and honestly it was really hard because back then I had a full-time job from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock far but I live 30 minutes away from my work so um, and I have a one-hour lunch and so it's basic I spent 10 hours a day just on this job and in addition to that I am a college lecturer I teach a class at the 
local college. In addition to that, I was also doing postdoc research, which is up to 10 hours a week. Um, it's a paid research job, um, and I just do it at home. And in addition to that, I also produce the three to four YouTube videos on this channel. And in addition to that, I was also teaching, well, I'm still teaching. I'm a yoga teacher, so I was teaching between four to six yoga classes a week that it's about five to six to seven hours. So in total, after my calculation, I was working 80 freaking hours per week. So I was drinking a lot of coffee just to sustain my busy lifestyle. And I felt like I don't have stress from my other job, I just have stress from my main job. Made a promise to myself, well, I will only drink one cup of coffee a day and maybe one cup of black tea. So that is about less than 200 milligrams of caffeine. So the general recommendation is that when you're pregnant, you should drink less than 200 milligrams of caffeine per day. And I made that promise to myself before I got pregnant for the second time. Like, I want to limit that before I'm pregnant for the second kid. So the third thing trying to conceive, make a full recovery from my first miscarriage. Um, that speaks to um, taking the prenatal. So whether if you had a miscarriage or not, you should be starting taking prenatals if you're thinking about having baby for the next six months so if you're thinking about oh next year I want probably want to start trying for babies start taking that prenatal it's so important because I was taking prenatal and I felt like my nails and hair are growing so pretty like prenatal are great vitamins that you can take regardless if you try to have babies but the moment I got pregnant like all of my levels went down because all of the new the babies just sucking everything from your body definitely a very important thing is started to take that prenatal vitamins before trying to conceive and also overall change the lifestyle that you have so other than stress um, uh, physical stress emotional stress other than the consumptions just put yourself in a very good diet um, I like a um, well-balanced diet because I did have a little anemia at the beginning of my pregnancy and I was eating I used to not eat a lot of red meat but ever since I was pregnant I intentionally ate a lot of red meat which actually helped afterwards after several months of my blood work actually show that like my iron just went up just talk to your doctor uh, even before you're pregnant to just see like what vitamins and supplements you need to be taking even though I'm not vegetarian I'm not vegan I'm still taking extra vitamin B12 make sure you talk to your doctor take all of the supplements and I think this is very important is to start exercise before you're pregnant because it's hard to start once you're pregnant and to me, I benefited a lot from exercising before I was pregnant because I have very good cardiovascular health. So when you're pregnant, you may be finding a hard time catching your breath, your breath is short and you, your heart rate is high. And I was so lucky that my cardiovascular health and my strength are pretty good before. So now I don't have that as much of an issue compared to a lot of other pregnant women. All right, so the next tip of trying to conceive is a very technical one is to track your chart, is to track your menstrual cycle. Um, if your menstrual cycle is shorter than 28 days, you may wanna check with your OB and maybe do some fertility tests. When I was a teenager, my menstrual cycle was always 21 days. It turned out that when I was a teenager, I never ovulated. And slowly my period just completely gone and I had to go to an OB, I had to go through a um, hormone treatment of several months to manually regulate my hormones. I gained like 35 pounds within three months. I was like crazy time of because of, I was taking extra um, estrogen and progestion for three months. Uh, progestion is a synthetic hormone of progesterone, if you didn't know. But then ever since I stopped, when the stress came back, like my cycle just went from 28 days back to 21 days. That means I wasn't ovulating either. <laughs> and also my OB back then told me to track my temperature to make sure I ovulate. And 
if you track your temperature, if you notice you, there is no temperature up during your ovulation or after your ovulation, then probably means you didn't ovulate. So very important to go to your OB to get your cycle right. You start thinking about trying babies before trying the ovulation strip or whatever. I would recommend you to track your temperature for several cycles to make sure you have that ovulation spike. It may vary from different person to person, but after three to four cycles, you should know that, okay, I probably ovulated last cycle. So for me, what is a game changer back then when I was 20, 22 years old um, was actually acupuncture and acupuncture actually helped me this time as well I went to acupuncture and I also had migraines and other issues and my acupuncture like actually I went to her three times a week for two months and ever since then my cycle has always been 28 days it's crazy because before I was 22 my cycle was never 28 days except for the months that I was actually manually taking the hormones and several months after that but slowly it just went back so I would say acupuncture changed my life if I didn't do it back then I probably wouldn't have ovulated for so many years when I was trying to conceive before I tried to conceive the first baby I didn't track my cycles before I become very serious about trying for babies we were just doing the baby dance whenever we have time whenever we're in the mood and six to nine months no babies absolutely no babies and that's because I didn't even track my cycles I didn't even try to intentionally do the baby dance during the ovulation stage so to actually try to conceive you need to do the baby dance during a period of time in each month and my experience just proved that if you fail to do so, you won't get pregnant. <laughs> the moment we started trying for the during the window, we got pregnant in the second month of trying. <laughs> so I don't think it's my fertility. I really think that I've heard about different stories on the internet. Some people, they believe you should take a natural approach. You shouldn't be doing the baby dance just because you're trying to conceive. You should be just doing it for the sake of romance. That's great for them. Personally, never worked. <laughs> never worked. Because my cycles are very, very, very accurate. It's very on time. And we always somehow avoiding the ovulation stage when we are doing the baby dance, not being super serious of trying to conceive. Pull out your calendar. If your cycle is close to 28 days, it may be 26 days, 30 days, 35 days, that's okay. Um, so first, mark your first day of period. Mark your 14 days uh, after the first day of period. That's usually your ovulation day. But just because it's your ovulation day doesn't mean you will ovulate that day. It's your predicted ovulation day. You may ovulate the day before, the two days before, or two days after or three days after it really depends on how long your cycle is and your mental mental state and your stress and whatever lifestyle factor of that month the month that we conceived our baby i actually didn't ovulate until very late because um we had a new nephew and there were some health issues with our newborn and me and my husband became very stressed for our nephew i just <laughs> couldn't sleep and then the moment i saw my nephew to the hospital he's like you know he's plugged in and everything but like i was like oh my gosh he's doing so good oh my gosh like i just had this great maternal instinct or whatever i was just so happy to see my new nephew and I, he's so cute and then i ovulated that same night i'm telling you like stress mental health things will happen so you may not ovulate the day that you predict it to be but the general rule of thumb is you want to do the baby dance about five days before the ovulation and one day after the ovulation that gave you about six days of window each month to conceive the baby so when we were in the past when we were trying it like we just always happen to avoid that window because even though it's six days your chance of conceiving is higher when you do the baby dance close to your actual ovulation date the day before or the day at ovulation is the best day to do the baby dance 
So even if I did, we did a baby dance five days before the ovulation. By the time it's the ovulate, by the time I ovulate, the sperms they could have just died, may not have survived for five days. So when we were trying to conceive our first kid, with we ended up having a miscarriage. Um, we I didn't use any ovulation strip or whatever. I just pinpoint that week of ovulation. That's like roughly six to seven days. And I told my husband baby dance every other day during this one week window. So we we kind of did that in March and it didn't work in April my period came and we did that again in April and then in May we conceived our first kid if you are regular then you may not need the ovulation strip if you do the baby dance every other day or every day during that window then it should work after three to four months because the chance of conceiving a baby each month is 25%. So even if you did everything right, it's only 25% of the chance that you may conceive the baby. We ended up miscarrying the baby. I think part of the reason was because they were painting walls in my office building. They were painting outside and indoor walls using the oil-based paint for four long months, starting from April to August, they were still painting. I ended up quitting my job because my doctor's booklet said that oil-based painting is bad, like prolonged. Like if you do that, you have to open the window, you have to whatever, you, like there are precautions to make. And just consider four months of breathing that fumes and I could smell it. The thing is, it's not like it's unnoticeable. Like I could smell it. There are days that I feel dizzy indoors and I had to leave the house, leave the office. And then I received note that we're not allowed to leave the office to breathe fresh air for more than 15 minutes which is fine, I ended up quitting that job because I felt like being exposed to those chemicals, prolonged exposure to those chemicals are bad. I ended up quitting my job because I think that may be a contributor to my first miscarriage because my first miscarriage was, um, the doctor thinks it was 99% of the chance to be a chromosomal abnormalities. And I miscarried at seven weeks and one day. Actually, the chance of miscarrying at seven weeks after seven weeks is less than 10%. So it has to be some sort of like DNA kind of like mutated and the cells couldn't actually form right. So, and we actually saw a heartbeat before the heartbeat was gone. So which means I think part of the development was normal, but it just wasn't completely normal. Cause like the chance of miscarrying is very high at 20 to 25% at four weeks, and it slowly decreased from five weeks to six weeks to seven weeks. At seven weeks, after seeing a heartbeat on ultrasound, the chance of a, like, the chance of miscarriage is actually less than 5% after recognizing a heartbeat at ultrasound. But I end up miscarrying it afterwards. So it was definitely a devastating time. I really do think those chemicals are bad. So avoid those harsh environment, those chemicals, those like, chemicals that may actually cause genetic mutations of the baby. After my miscarriage, my doctor actually told me as long as I'm emotionally ready, I can immediately try. And I was emotionally ready because I recognize that miscarriage is very common. It happens to one in four women. I happen to be that one in four women. And there is nothing that I did cause that miscarriage. If it was my formal like employment where they paint the walls or whatever, there's no way to prove that. There's no way to sue them. Um, and there is one way to correct that, quit my job. So I did. <laughs> I actually didn't quit my job right after the miscarriage. I actually tried for two months and I couldn't get pregnant. So I quit my job and a month that I quit my job, I actually got pregnant. It's sad, but if you're experiencing miscarriage, just knowing that it's not your fault. So my doctor was telling me, just look at the bright side. Like it just means you're fertile. You can conceive a baby and the baby was able to survive up to seven weeks. It's just unfortunate fortunate and it may not happen to your second baby don't worry about it unless you have several consecutive miscarriages and I do think that like I was remaining hopeful another reason that I was very hopeful was that after I share my experience of my miscarriage a lot of my friends um, actually reached out to me telling me that they actually had one or two miscarriages um, before their healthy firstborn child there is nothing to hold on to like I just felt like holding on to the past mis 
mishap would just slow down my future happiness. So instead of holding on to the past, like sadness and bad happened, I should focus on what's gonna happen next. See, so after I miscarried the baby, I keep testing positive with my pregnancy test for the rest of the month. So I felt like the chance of conceiving is very low if I keep testing pregnant. So finally, I tested negative and then my period came. Great. So if you miscarried your baby, I think first I would keep testing myself using the cheap Amazon pregnancy test. I will link it down below to make sure that I get a negative pregnancy, pregnancy test. This is my rule of thumb is I want a negative pregnancy test to know that the next positive test is not false positive. I wasn't sure if my cycle was gonna be 28 week, 28 days or shorter or longer or anymore because um, it could disrupt your regular hormone productions. So my sister-in-law actually gave me her um, ovulation test. I feel like ovulation test strips really help if you if your period is somewhat irregular or if you had a miscarriage that happened before and you don't know if your cycle is going to be 28 days or the same and so in the past i i conceived without the ovulation strip and i think it's okay i think it will totally work but for this one like i needed the ovulation strip just to pinpoint my exact ovulation day and it turned out to be the number 14th which is really great my period usually lasts for seven days it's so i usually start testing my ovulation strip nine days after my first day of period so on the ninth day i start to test myself in the morning um, you don't have to test yourself in the morning, you can test in the evening, it's not the same as pregnancy tests. So you will start to notice that testing lines start to get darker and darker and darker. And when in the month that I actually conceived, I had a um, testing line, the same darkness of the control line in the morning. And I was like, today's probably close to the ovulation date. So I came back home in the evening and I tested again and my testing strip was, my testing line was darker than my control line. That's when I knew today is the day. <laughs> Tonight is the night we need to do the baby dance because I will ovulate in the next 12 hours. Actually, I think I ovulated the next eight hours <laughs> during sleep. Your actual ovulation time. After you get a super positive ovulation test, it means you will ovulate in the next 12 to 24 hours. It could be between 12 to 36 hours, but for me, it's usually in 12 to 24 hours. And I also have my Fitbit. I also bought Fitbit Premium. It does have a body temperature sensor. It's not as sensitive as the one that you use at the thermometer for a specific ovulation test. So usually after you ovulated, your body temperature will increase, has a spike. So that means like you ovulated basically. So I usually try to do the baby dance one day before the ovulation and the day of the ovulation. If you guys don't have time, that's the two days you should be doing it. Um, but to increase the chance, you can do it two days before the ovulation and then one day before the ovulation and the ovulation. So that's, that means three days. The chance of you do the baby dance before the ovulation is higher because uh, according to research, the sperm should be there to wait for the egg, not the other way around. If you have the chance to do it three days, do it on three of those consecutive days. And according to research, there is no research to show that if you, the more baby dance you do, the better, because if you do too much baby dance, the, there may not be enough sperm. You don't have to use the ovulation strip, but it's it's very helpful. So I'll link mine down below. It's very cheap from Amazon. So a lot of times when it comes to trying to conceive, there are a lot of misinformation on the internet, I think. I think one of the misinformation is that you have to wait for several cycles before you try to conceive again. So that is completely an old mindset in the past. Um, there are actually recent research tracking women who had a miscarriage and they found that people who conceived with 
within three months to six months of miscarriage actually had a higher chance of conception within the three months and have a higher chance of live birth um, if they conceived right after the miscarriage. This is to compare to women who had a miscarriage and waited for six months and trying to conceive. That's one of the reasons why we pl we decided to try right away is because a higher chance of fertility, higher chance of conception, and higher chance of life birth. So I do believe in like statistics. I believe in, <laughs> granted that I was a data analyst before, I know a lot of times there are a lot of emotions coming out when it comes to miscarriage and trying to conceive. I had pretty bad mood swings um, before my first day of period after my miscarriage. And I looked it up. Apparently studies have shown that women have worse PMS symptoms after a miscarriage before the first period. So that one week before my first period after my miscarriage, I felt so darn bad for no absolute after i had my first period i knew like it never happened again it was just that one particular month really bad pms symptoms so i feel like even though i am towards the more logical side of thinking i am still a human so it's really hard to deal with miscarriage but at the same time, knowing that maybe some part of that emotional roller coaster is also because the hormones leaving your body, and it's basically you giving birth, and then also before the first period, like the hormone shifts, the hormone coming in, leaving out, it's very hard. Sometimes we get lucky, sometimes we get unlucky, and just believe that universe will even you out. And I actually made a video um, sharing how I knew I was pregnant before my positive pregnancy test. So if you guys want to know like what are the early pregnancy symptoms, definitely check out that video. And uh, thank you so much for watching. All the best luck to you sending you the baby lust. I hope everyone is going to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. Bye, thanks for watching.